Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in uh, today's session. Uh, we have a special guest, Mike Justison from the ComSci department, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but he'll be teaching us OBS, uh, how to use it in junction with the light board. Um, just some of the uh, expected outcomes we have on our website. Uh, we're going to give you an introduction to OBS. Synchronous sessions using OBS in conjunction with Zoom and MS Teams. So we'll be teaching you how to use OBS on Zoom, how to get that set up. Uh, managing a live broadcast, uh, just learning the ins and outs of how to use the program in terms of doing a live session. Um, the Lightboard integration, uh, we're going to show you how we have that set up on OBS. We're going to be also showing overlaying images and slides using chroma key. Um, this will also include the green screen if anyone is interested. Uh, we're going to be showing how to use interactive polls with Zoom or, yeah, with Zoom. And any other enhancements for your camera settings that can be control that can be controlled in OBS. Um, yeah. So, Mike, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks very much, Dan. I just wanted to say thanks for the invitation to um, to provide this this info session. I hope people find it useful, and I'm going to take it as a compliment that you think I'm in uh, Comp Sci. Because <laughs> I'm actually in the School of Engineering Practice yes, I and just, Technology. I just, yeah. <laughs> just came to mind. Yeah, I'm so sorry. About but that. no, like I said, I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. I'm just so tech savvy <laughs> that I must be in comp sci. Um, anyway, um, so welcome to the, the, the session on, um, it's titled OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. And we've got sort of the subtitle, you know, sort of for, for live teaching using uh, Lightboard. And I'll, I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm not a, an expert in, in open broadcaster software. Um, it was something that I came across when I was looking for software that I could use to flip the image because, you know, as, as you know, I'm the light board guy. And when I write on the light board, it needs to be the right way around so that you can read it. And um, so, so despite what you may think, if you're in Teams or if you're in Zoom and you've poked around in the settings, you'll see a setting that says, you know, mirror my, my video. You can click that. You can click that all you want and it won't actually mirror your image for your audience. It only mirrors it for you. So the, how I came upon OBS was searching for a software that really flipped my image around. And I came across this thing called Open Broadcaster Software studio and it's an open source free software used by gamers and youtubers there's there are tons of resources online if you want to learn more than you learn today uh, just get into google and, and search for um, you know obs getting started or obs tutorial and, and you'll find sort of all kinds of stuff um, the other thing i should mention is that we will also provide download links. Um, so, so Dan and Jin, they'll, they'll provide you with, with links where you can go and, and get the OBS software, download it. It's not just the OBS software. I'll just write it here. Uh, it's not just the OBS. It's actually called OBS Studio. But there's also something you, you, you need that's called the OBS uh, Virtual Camera. And that's a plugin for the OBS studio that essentially makes it so that everything you do in this, this software also is sort of available to you as a virtual camera. So if you're in Zoom or you're in Teams, maybe you've messed around in the settings and you've seen, okay, what's my, my camera source? Well, if you've opened and you're running the OBS software with the virtual camera plugin activated, when you go into Zoom or Teams, in your settings for a camera, you'll see OBS camera and you select that. And what that does is it makes it so everything you do in the OBS software is as if it's a, a another camera. Uh, so that was, that was really the first trick that I had to figure out. Um, so, so anyway, that, that's sort of how I, I, I came upon this OBS. Like I said, I'm not a, an expert in, in the software, 
but I have learned, let's say, the essentials for what I need for live synchronous teaching. The other main aspect of what we're going to talk about today is the light board. And you see sort of this smudgy area that I just erased. And you're probably thinking, hey, he didn't have all these smudges when I saw his fancy sort of advertising for the light board. Well, um, that's because there's some trickery going on. And I'm, I'm just going to go to full screen. This is actually my full, my full screen. I, I was sitting down. In, in the uh, Bachelor of Technology program, we famously have three-hour night classes. So if there was a way I can teach while sitting, I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. But, um, but anyway, now I'm standing up. I'm behind the light board. And I have a pretty good amount of space where I can write. But as I said before, it's kind of got some smudginess. And maybe the lighting doesn't look that great. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to share my screen that shows the OBS software and what it looks like and how I'm controlling things. And I'm going to show you how to clean up the look of your light board as a virtual camera in OBS. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So in just a second, you should see, you should see OBS. Maybe someone could just verify that they're seeing, in, in fact, my OBS yep, yep. screen. Good. Okay, good. Good. So, uh, so as you can see, it's kind of it, it kind of looks like a messy chalkboard. First thing you'll do in in your um, in your home lightboard studio, or even in the in the real studio for that matter, and Dan and and Jin could attest that there's some, there's some lighting stuff you need to do. Um, uh, I'm going to I, I'm going to do an adjustment of the camera, and I'll explain in a minute how I'm some of the terminology we use, but I kind of blew my brains out for a while trying to uh, control things using the Logitech uh, webcam software. I kind of gave up on that and now I just use OBS for everything. So in my video configurations, all I do quite simply is I take the brightness down. So I just drop, drop the brightness down to a level where a lot of the smudginess disappears and then the other thing I do is that on my light board, I also have a brightness control and I can drop the brightness of the light board down. And then I'm getting back into that sort of um, kind of studio quality look. And if you, if, you, if, if you saw some of my other stuff, you know, this was really my inspiration were some of these um, McPherson Institute studio light board videos. And they're really good. And uh, there's a lot that goes into getting the lighting right in a studio. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm in a very imperfect studio, but I'm compensating just by adjusting the brightness of the camera uh, and the brightness of the light board itself. So even now, if I, I can still write on my, my light board and you can still read it, uh, read it fine. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's the first thing I'll say in terms of getting started with, with your light board. The other thing I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a, a tour of OBS. So right now you see me on in sort of the, in a window in the middle of the screen. That's kind of the OBS kind of um, control window. And that's showing what is being broadcast through the OBS virtual camera. And I, I appreciate there's a lot of jargon happening here. Just try to stay with me as best you can. Um, in, in the OBS environment, that's this screen that I'm in right now, there's some, um, some jargon that you need to, to learn about. The first one is something called sources. And sources are down in this box right here, the second box from the left. And you can see that under sources, I've actually added something called video capture device. That is my webcam. And, and what I can do is this box, you can see I can move myself around. This box is a source. Right, so I can, I can select selected. I, well, actually, I don't even think I have to select the image. I just go to edit. And then I do transform. And under edit, 
transform, I just do flip horizontal. And when I flip horizontal, that, that changes it to uh, something that people can read when I write on the light board. The other bit of jargon that I have to sort of explain is something called scenes. And what scenes are, are different collections of sources. So in this particular scene, I'm in, I'm in what I, a scene that I called full screen. And that just means it's just me with the webcam, but I've also got audio in there as well, but I've done it within the, the video. There's, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can add an audio source and a video source. This video source has the option of also including the audio with it. So it looks like I just have one thing, but really I have um, a webcam. It's a Logitech webcam. And I also have um, a USB microphone. So those are my, my two sources in this full screen scene. But if I want to do another scene, like here, this one's called Geotech Course, I can flip to this. Now this scene actually has two items, actually it has three items in it. So you can see in the sources, there's a text item. The text item is this scrolling reminder about when the midterm exam is. Um, the other one is something called an image slideshow, and that's some, some slides we'll talk about in more detail in a few minutes. All right, so that's my image slideshow. And then the third one is my uh, video capture device. And the cool thing about OBS is that the order of those sources is important. So if I want something to be on top of other things, I can change the order. So my video capture device is sort of on the bottom, and that makes it so I'm behind my slides. If I move that up, now, now my video camera is in front of my slides and I've sort of cut off some of my slides. So that's not good. So I'll, I'm going to move my video capture device down. Um, you know, there's a ton of things to learn about OBS. And I'm really just going to try to hit some of the basics, mainly geared towards the purpose of live synchronous teaching. Okay, so, so, um, so I'll flip back to to just the main screen. And I'll pause for a second because I think there might be um, maybe some more some questions. I'm going to flip back here. If if someone has a question so far, it might that was, I threw a lot at you pretty quick. Um, and I see in the chat that uh, I think Jin has put the the uh, the link to download OBS. Uh, but I just pause for a moment. If you if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, that's totally fine. Or if you want to type it in the chat, um, if if you don't have a question, I can go through sort of how I did how I created some of those uh, scenes. Um, maybe another couple just quick words about your own Lightboard Studio. I'm I am using uh, just two lights, and if if you if you purchased a light board from Lightboard Depot, that's the exact setup that I'm using. So that, that company is actually selling um, what I kind of co-developed with Adrian Katai over the last couple of months. So the package that you buy from that company um, should give you the ability to exactly replicate what I'm doing or what you're seeing right now. It does take a little bit of fine tuning and um, in helping the faculty set up some of their studios, I also realized that uh, a lot of your surrounding uh, wall and ceiling colors will also affect your your lighting in your Lightboard Studio. So I, I'm in a in a in a bedroom in my house, and it has a white ceiling, and I think that has a nice effect for sort of uh, filling in some of the lighting uh, that I have. Uh, so it's not just, you know, two lights coming from, it is two lights coming from either side, but some of that light spills out onto the ceiling and I end up getting kind of a, a, a sort of a better, a well-lit sort of uh, look. Okay, so, so if there's no questions, I'm, I'm going to go through and show you how, um, for teaching, let's say, how you do something, something like this. And these are PowerPoint slides uh, that already exist. And the great thing about OBS is that I can still use my existing content and I can actually, I can scroll through it, I can interact with it. And sort of the natural question is, okay, how the heck do you do that? Well, in OBS, I'll go back and I'll share my screen again.
Okay, so if you can see that, I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna go to this. And yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Okay, so, so this, is, um, this is a particularly complex line drawing uh, that was in one of my PowerPoint slides. Um, and really this would be kind of almost too much detail for a PowerPoint slide in a classroom, but it's one of those images that you get from a publisher's slide deck. Um, well, anyway, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you want to interact with these or use them in a way that you can you know, point to them and uh, explain things sort of with you together with the content. So what I've done in, in OBS is you can see under sources, I've added an image file. And the way you do that is you just, um, you know, you click the little plus sign and when you, and it gives you a list of all the different kinds of sources that you can add, you know, so you see on here, uh, image slot image or what you're going to use for, um, for, for showing your PowerPoint slides in OBS. And, um, I'll get into the, the, the detail, more of the details of how you do that from PowerPoint, but first I want to illustrate the trick of, of how I make the background disappear. So you'll notice that this slide has been prepared with a green background and the lines have been converted to white and that's knowing that we're going to remove the green and then leave the white. So, so what I do is I, I click on that source and I apply something called a chroma key filter and the default chroma key filter in OBS is green. And I can adjust this slider bar until I remove sort of the, just the right amount of green or greenness. And I go back to my, my slideshow and now you can see the green has magically disappeared. So this is kind of like how green screen technology works. Um, I'll mention that later as well. You can still do full green screen behind you with the light board. But for now, I just wanted to show how you take an image and how you sort of remove the background so that you can then interact with it. And, and I realize this slide is a little bit blurry um, and I could probably sharpen it up a little bit, but just for illustration purposes, I thought that was a good uh, complicated sort of image. How you would insert all of your PowerPoint slides for a course is um, really a, a couple of things. I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll maybe write down some steps for you. If I can find my pen, here we are. So, so um, you'll have your PowerPoint slides for your course. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into, power, into your PowerPoint slides. And, and step one is I would go to the, um, the slide master. And if you don't know what that is, um, that's like a, a place in PowerPoint where you can kind of change the global settings for all the slides. So if you're, if you're gonna put a, like a background image or you know, some type of a watermark, you would go into this slide master view. So if, find the slide master view, and then you're gonna scroll all the way to the top and set the master slide uh, to a green background. And when I say green, I actually mean the color green. Sounds like a, a strange thing to say, but if, if you're in the RB, RGB color scheme, it's all green. It's, it's zero on the other colors and 255 on the green, if you know what I mean. And in most software, this will actually be called green. So, so that's really what we're looking for. And that's what OBS is gonna be looking for when it tries to remove that color. And then I would also I would also set your text uh, text to white, or it could be some other um, bright color. Um, and after you've done this, you can have a look through your slides and decide what other changes do you think you'd like to make if you're going to be interacting with your slides. Um, and I'm just going to maybe I'll just switch back to the actual. Um, this view for a second. That's just my, so we're not looking at all of OBS. You can see this sort of full screen. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, save as. Okay, so, so in PowerPoint, you're gonna save as, and you're gonna save your PowerPoint slides as image files. And 
uh, if you scroll down through the save as options, like you're probably familiar with saving things as like a previous version of PowerPoint or something like that, um, then it, uh, one of the options is to save your slides as images. And uh, maybe somebody can just remind me, we talked about this yesterday. I know I've saved them as JPEGs um, and I'll just maybe do this. You can save them as JPEGs and you'll be given the option to save um, save all the slides. Rithik, can you remember, does it actually have that option? I forget what you said yesterday in PowerPoint. Does it also save them as, uh, as uh, PNG? Yeah. yeah. It does. So, so really, this is going to be the preferred one because what we discovered recently in, in trying to uh, fix up some, some line drawing slides is that the PNG file format is the best one for removing the background um, or changing the background color. So, so either one of these actually you could, you could experiment with. And then all of those slides will be saved with numbers. They'll, they'll actually be called slide one, slide two, slide three, and it'll save that into a folder that you specify. Um, so then you'll have all of, all of your slides named slide one, slide two. And, and then, uh, so they'll be in a folder. And then in, in, um, in OBS, you insert, so then you insert the um, uh, image slideshow. Okay, so you'll insert an image slideshow, which is really just telling OBS where those image files are. Um, and then after you've done that, I'll go back to share, share my OBS screen. Okay, so back in OBS, if I go to my, my geotechnical engineering course, okay, you can see, sorry, you can see kind of all the junk that I've written on there, but I, then you can see my slides um, are all just being called up from OBS through this image slideshow, which is the folder. And how I get that is I go to sources, I add a source and I pick image slideshow and I'll just say create new. And then I just browse my computer to find the slideshow I want and, and, and click it uh, and really just identifying the folder. And um, after you've done that, you set hotkeys to move through the slides. So right now I've just set up my arrow keys to go forwards and backwards through my image slideshow. Okay, so, and, and the hotkeys are in um, settings so I click on settings and then hotkeys, it lists all of the sources and it, it lets me pick hotkeys for switching to any of my sources. And down here you'll see, um, there's, I'll find the one that's the right image slideshow. So here's the image slideshow and next slide is right, previous slide is left. Okay, so I, I set hotkeys and then that allows me to, to move among my slides. Okay. I, I know this sounds like a lot of information to absorb, but I know it is recorded. So if you want to come back and, and look at it, just like a student saying, wait a sec, what did he say in that class? You can go back and, and have a look. Um, but, uh, but basically, that's what you need to know uh, to set up an image slideshow. One, one thing to be careful of, when you save as in PowerPoint, um, it saves your slides sequentially numbered as slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four. Well, kind of a nasty thing happens when you get to slide nine, slide 10. Slide 10 alphabetically comes right after slide one. So, so be careful when you import that image slideshow into OBS, OBS alphabetizes them and your slides will be out of order unless you go back and, um, and, and give them uh, alphanumeric names that actually occur in the correct order. So I learned that the hard way. Um, I was teaching a class in, in around beginning of April and I was like, why, why is this slide coming up? That's not, that's not right. And it's because of the, just the naming. So, so what I usually do is I go back to my exported slides and I'll put, you know, an A in front of slide one, a B in front of slide two, a C in front. It's a bit tedious but it makes sure everything is in the right order. So, so that's, really, um, that's really how I do this. Um, 
And, and I'll pause again and ask if there are any questions about that. You might ask, well, why bother doing all of that? And, and really, I think the beauty is in the ability to be able to interact with your slides and keep that, that contact with the students. Um, we do have a question. Um, so someone has asked, is there an advantage um, via OBS compared with Zoom MS Teams alone to subsequently be able to obtain captions? Um, so that's a very good question. The question is about captioning. And I believe that there are captioning plugins that you could find for OBS. OB OBS is an open source software. So people are developing new things for it all the time. But um, currently, it's my understanding that the, the, there's not a requirement to do live captioning as of yet. So my approach to the captioning has been to record my lecture and then upload my lecture to Mac Video and then Mac Video chews on it for a while and adds the captioning. And the great thing about the Mac Video captioning is that it's also searchable and clickable. You can, you can jump around to, to wherever you know, something was said as long as the, the captioning uh, has captured the word correctly. Um, so uh, I had explored uh, live streaming because I thought if you could live stream then you could tap into some of the live captioning things, for instance, in PowerPoint. The problem I've had with live stream is the delay. And I did live streaming just from OBS. And um, in, in just in OBS, I was getting a 20 second delay in the broadcast. If you do it through Teams, uh, you can still do a live uh, live broadcast, broadcast, but it was a 10 second delay. And I just don't think that's kind of acceptable for teaching. It's certainly not if you want to have, have any kind of interaction uh, at all. So, um, so uh, anyway, so that, that's a good question though about the captioning. Like, like I said, my approach is uh, to use Mac video and let Mac video do the captioning and then students can see the captioning in the recording, but they don't see it live. Um, there's also some evidence that live captioning can actually be distracting to the people who don't need it. So whatever you, you are doing for, if you do end up doing some live captioning, make sure that the students are also able to turn it off uh, if they don't need it. Um, but, but it's a good, a, a good question. Um, again, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of me talking. Um, <laughs> any, other, any other questions about, uh, about that? Okay. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I think I, I also wanted to talk about something um, about requirements. I forgot to mention this at the beginning, and I'll just say quickly, I'm, I'm using an old computer for this. You don't need any great power um, for it. You, um, uh, I'm only using an i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's a five-year-old computer. Uh, it's a $100 webcam. My most expensive splurge or my item is really my, my microphone, which was 140 bucks. Um, but I'm, I'm told that it, you can actually get quite a, a, a difference. I'll also point out if you're going to do live broadcasts um, of any kind, it's really a good idea to separate your uh, microphone from your speakers. So you can see I'm actually, I'm using earbuds. So my, the audio that I hear from you is coming in through my earbuds and that eliminates the, the need for any kind of feedback. Um, OBS also has some great features for filtering sound. So I can do noise cancellation or I can do, um, I, I'm, I use something called a noise gate where my microphone actually turns off below a certain decibel and then turns back on when the decibels go above a certain amount. It's called a noise gate. And I find that to be quite, quite useful. Um, um, any, any other uh, questions? Or, or uh, Dan or, or Jin, can, I, can you think of anything else that I, I should talk about? Uh, uh, live polling, that was another thing we talked about um, and advertised. The live polling feature is something that if, if you wanna do live polling, the easiest thing to do is to do it just in Zoom. 
and live polling is built into Zoom. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not the host of this, uh, and so I don't have the live polling button, but uh, Dan has the live polling yep. button. If you want, I can just quickly go and show, share my screen on how yeah. to set it up. Sure, sure yeah. thing, sure thing. Yeah. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. Uh, desktop two. So on Zoom, uh, you have to be the creator of the meeting to use the polling because it is linked to your McMaster account, your McMaster email. So if you guys see on my screen over here, once you click on polling, which should be next to the share screen option on Zoom, you'll be led to a, uh, you'll, your web browser will open, it'll open up the link and you'll go to, and it'll pull up the add a poll. So if I type my question here, what is two plus two? And you can put in a bunch of answers down here for single choices. You have an option to do multiple choice. And once you save the question, or once you add all your questions and you're all set to go and you save it, it'll show up here in this polling. And what you can do in OBS, you can actually go to your sources and do a window capture of the poll and have it set up on your screen so that they can see it. Uh, once you have it set up, and once they start clicking the answer, it will launch the poll. This window will open. And you can do the same thing as well. You can window, cap window capture that from your sources and you can just see it, see the live polling going on. Um, you guys can go ahead and answer just to see if you wanna see the bars move and stuff like that. I think I cannot access that because I made the question, so. <clears throat> yep, so you see it going on right now, two, four, and then once you're done, you can end the poll. I'll close the screen, I believe. And it'll just bring back the original um, window when you first created it. And you can share your results. You can relaunch the poll. And that's the most easiest way if you're doing it through Zoom. Yeah, um, yeah that's good. Yeah. Uh, so um, what I would do with any kind of polling is that I would do just like what Dan said, and that is embed uh, embed a window into OBS so that when so your students can actually see the polling results coming up uh, as it's happening. And uh, I'm sorry I couldn't demonstrate that. I thought that I I, I did have a scene set up, um, but uh, but yeah the polling option the polling button disappeared on me. Um, but uh, but yeah it's it's a it's a good way for to increase some engagement every once in a while take a break. And I'll, I'll say that as well. I mean, I've already been talking for too long, but if you, um, you know, if you, if you talk for a while, show some slides, do some explaining, uh, then do a poll or break to a video um, or, you, you know, do, do something else basically uh, to try to keep the students engaged. And I would encourage people to, to look to what some of the really good YouTubers do because truly they're paid for by how much engagement they have, right? So the more minutes of watch time uh, they attract, the more money they make. So if you want inspiration on how to increase student engagement, look to look to some some good YouTubers. Um, yeah, and if you want to just Google, you know, YouTubers using OBS or something like that, you'll see all kinds of uh, all kinds of stuff out there. Um, and and like we talked about before too, the gamers will gamers also use use OBS. Um, it's got that great ability to combine sources from different feeds, different sound, different video. Uh, it's pretty good in that respect. Um, I, I'm just looking through our our screen. I, I also, if you tuned in to learn about green actual green screen. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips. And in fact, I, I do have a green screen right under the black screen here in my home studio, if you, if you can see that or not. But so uh, I have a green screen. And one of the great things about a green screen is that you, you kind of do the exact same thing I showed with that complicated slide where I removed the green only you do it with your video source. You do it with yourself. So as long as you're not wearing anything green, you go in, you apply a chroma key green filter, and then, it's, and then it just becomes you. And then you can add whatever sources you want and move the sources to behind you. 
and you can still have and then you can have layers you can have the the images that you want to show behind you can have you and you can still use your light board so if you actually want to have three layers you, you can do that and i did some of that for um for the may at mac open house where i i had light board myself green screen with images of the campus or images of lecture halls limit images of you know the residences and um you know i i i use the light board to actually point to my residence room when I was, you know, when I was an undergrad and uh, kind of, you know, it surprises people when they see sort of some writing pop up in, in midair. Um, so, so all of this, all of this stuff is really, it's, it's really designed to create sort of a better experience for the students uh, and to try to keep their attention, just like YouTubers. Um, is there any other questions about this? Any any uh, people with challenges, let's say, setting up their lightboard studio or their lightboard at home, uh, that that have that have questions. I know I, I went through a lot of struggles with with lighting and camera settings and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, I, I'd offer to uh, give you some advice if if you're having difficulty uh, with your setup. But you know, I don't think we have any questions. No questions. Okay. Yeah, I know we were only scheduled for a half hour, but I knew we would go over that. <laughs> um. I'll turn it over, Dan. If you maybe maybe if you open it up for, I'll, I'll mute myself. I'll shut up, and then maybe people will ask you questions. Yeah. So uh, just a little bit about myself pertaining to questions. Um, I graduated from Humber College for broadcast television videography. So um, I did stuff for OHL. I did stuff at the Garden Square in Brampton. Um, I did some stuff at the BMO field. So if you guys have any questions related to camera equipment or even lighting itself, uh, feel free to. Unmute yourself and ask. I don't mind uh, opening up the floor to any questions. So, you know, Dan, I I have to say I was a bit surprised in the studio at how um, how the lighting was different, which I, I think we determined was largely due to the fact that I I have a I have a white ceiling above yes. me here at home. Yeah. And, and I, I know people who are maybe setting up a light board in their basement or some other out of the way place. Um, maybe if they don't have a white uh, surface directly above them, they might want to pin a sheet or something like that up there to get that, that reflected light sort of, so you, you know, the top of your head also gets some, some lighting. Yeah. So there's actually um, a, on Amazon, there's some things, there's, there's a thing called a reflector. Uh, that we use in photography and videography to uh, reflect the light off the surface or whatever, right? Um, typically, I would just buy one of those and it's this big circle. And it's just, it has a silver side, it has a gold side, depending on which one you want to use. Preferably, the silver one would be good. And you can have it actually just set up above you so that the light bounces off the top and it goes straight down to your face. And that would typically solve that issue. They're not too expensive. I don't think they're that much. I'm going to actually take a look right now. Um, photography reflector. Yeah, they're about $30. Uh, some of the smaller ones are, there's, there's a bunch of different sizes. Um, the smaller ones are about $20 and the bigger one is about $32. So I would use that as an option. Or if you want to, you can even go to the dollar store, pick up some white Bristol board and uh, just have them taped across the top so that it'll still bounce off the light. I'll tell you what, Dan, my, my first generation green screen was green Bristol board. So, um, <laughs> you know, so, and that worked totally fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, for, I forgot to show my spreadsheet. I was going to just point out um, if, if you're teaching coding or any other kind of any, if you want to show us any screen of any content, um, you know, and, and you want to be able to interact with it, like this is a spreadsheet. And it's not just a static view; it's actually like a live, a live sheet. And um, you know, if this was if this was code, um, you know, as as you could do this, 
as long as as long as you can change the background color to green and the and the text to white, um, you know you can you can do any of that stuff uh, with with and I'm just inserting into OBS a, a window an open an open window. I mean I'm hoping people are are getting some ideas. Something else I've been doing is um, for the last few Fridays, I've been meeting with a small group of other instructors who are using OBS as a teaching tool. And um, uh, we've been sort of sharing some tips and tricks. And uh, if anyone is interested in joining that group, um, you, know, uh, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll send you an invite to that. Uh, it's a Zoom meeting. Okay, so I think if we don't have any more questions, I'll just end it off here. Um, thank you so much to everyone who came in today. Uh, thank you, Mike, for showing us the demonstration of OBS and Lightboard. And forgive me on the comms I comment earlier. Didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> that was my fault completely. Um, but yes, thank you everyone for joining. Um, all these resources, these videos that we recorded the past two weeks will be up on our website at edgetopicmaster.ca. Oh, we actually have one more question. Um, how do we integrate into Zoom with OBS? I believe is what she's, is what's being asked right now. Okay, uh, good, good question. I'm sorry that didn't come across um, more clearly. So, so once you've installed OBS and you've installed the OBS virtual camera, um, all you do is just start Zoom like you normally would, and then in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the the little video camera icon. My my mother-in-law, who's 88 years old, calls it the hot water bottle. All right, so you, there's a little up arrow beside the hot water bottle. And on your, it says select a camera. If you're running the OBS and you're running OBS virtual camera, then OBS camera shows up as a camera in Zoom. So, uh, so that's it. It's like right now I'm in Zoom and instead of just seeing me sitting at my desk at my home, you're just seeing me behind a light board, but it's exactly the same. I still have all the exact same buttons that I have in Zoom. So if I want to do breakout rooms or if I want to share my screen or if I want to use the chat, uh, it's, it's just, I am just in Zoom. Um, so, so, and the same thing works in Teams. So in Teams, you just go into settings and you select OBS camera as your camera instead of whatever your webcam is called. And, uh, and then you can completely manipulate, um, you know, your images, you can, you know, you can, you can show your slides or, and you can, you know, you can write, you can, you can do, do whatever. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's just zoom. I, I hope that, I hope that answers the question. Okay. Uh, yeah, if we uh, don't have any more questions, uh, and if you do have some later throughout the weekend or throughout the day, um, feel free to uh, email us. You can email me, Jen, yep. uh, Mike, Hithrick, um, and uh, we should be able to provide some answers. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We're uh, closing up. It's almost three now, so we're going to end it off here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Have a great weekend, and uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for coming.